Welcome back everyone and just as always I want to follow what you guys desire and so from my other scientific video you guys seem to enjoy it and I really appreciate it when you guys give us feedback and support us and smash the like button and say these positive things because it really motivates us. So we covered the, the fire style and in this video we're going to talk about the Rasengan and explain everything that it does in Naruto but also cover it scientifically as always so this is part of the series. I hope you enjoyed the video as always uh, make sure to smash the notification button so you know what we're going to upload as well as telling us what other anime you want us to cover about on this channel and yeah let's get started. The Rasengan, one of the most iconic jutsus used in all of Naruto, and as I said, in this video we will be going balls deep explaining what it is, how it works and why is it such a powerful jutsu to use. So what is the Rasengan? Rasengan literally means spiraling sphere. It is defined as a spiraling sphere of chakra that is held in the palm of the user's hand. It requires no hand seals to produce. Minato Namakaze created the Rasengan and it took him 3 years to complete the Jutsu, basing it off a tailed beast bomb that he observed. Even though it took him 3 years to complete, it is said to be an incomplete technique as ultimately Minato intended to add a nature manipulation to the Rasengan but was unable to do so. It's an A rank offensive Jutsu that was only mastered by 6 users that we know of so far. Minato, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Naruto, Konohamaru and Boruto. Contrary to a common misconception that the Rasengan is a wind release jutsu, it has no nature type, it is pure chakra. It is a jutsu that only requires chakra but with extreme chakra control in order to perform and it's described as the highest form of shape transformation. Once the Rasengan is achieved due to its complexity, it requires no chakra to sustain, it is completely self-sustaining and theoretically could remain indefinitely. It maintains its form but upon collision with something, the Rasengan releases its power and produces a spherical, grinding-like explosion with great destructive force. So how is the Rasengan achieved? To be able to complete the Rasengan, you are required to master three stages of chakra control one of them being rotation, second one being power and the third one being containment. The first stage of being rotation requires the user to spin their chakra in multiple directions at once. Essentially the user must be able to spiral their chakra in almost every direction to complete the first stage, hence why you see the streams of chakra spiraling around the Rasengan when it's completed. To show that this stage is completed, the user must be able to pop a water balloon as Naruto did this when he was taught by Jiraiya. Whilst this may be the first stage of learning the Rasengan, it is likely that this is the stage where most people would fail, as spiraling chakra is often never seen in the anime. With chakra control, almost all shinobi are only able to emit chakra with jutsus and control it for things such as walking on up trees and on water. So both of these are things that are done linearly and they're done in only one direction. Whilst this stage of the Rasengan would require manipulating chakra in essentially in an infinite number of directions around a center point. So this makes this stage one of the make or break stages of learning this jutsu and it's an extremely difficult stage for almost all shinobi to achieve unless they are incredibly gifted as the amount of concentration and chakra control and patience requires is extremely high so this is why probably Naruto is a gifted guy and he achieved it. The next stage is power. During this stage the user must increase power of the first stage. The chakra density and output must be increased exponentially as in this stage the test is to pop a rubber ball. This is said to be 100 times harder than popping a water balloon. The reason this is so difficult is because it requires the user to maintain the spiral motion of stage 1 which is already a difficult task but with increased power and with more power comes more chakra to control but ultimately this stage is purely about increasing the power of the Rasengan above all else. The final stage of the Rasengan is containment. The containment stage requires the user to contain the power and spiral motion of the Rasengan in a perfect sphere. 
controlling 100% of the power and shape of the Rasengan in the shape of a ball. For this, the test is to maintain the Rasengan within a balloon to help visualize the shape. If the balloon pops, the Rasengan is still not achieved, as it has not truly been contained. In this state, the Rasengan becomes more ordered and focused, thus increasing the power. This stage is one of the hardest as it requires the user to do all parts of the process at once. This is why Naruto and Konohamaru use shadow clones initially to learn this stage, to help with the final step of containing the Rasengan as they haven't got true mastery of the Rasengan, however later on they are able to achieve this without clones. So why is the Rasengan so powerful? How can we explain this scientifically? The Rasengan can be described as a sphere with the chakra spiraling around a center point in an infinite number of directions. This is total order. The Rasengan is an equilibrium, meaning that it is in a state of balance with all the competing forces balanced. This is the reason why the Rasengan requires little to no chakra to maintain when it is in equilibrium. When the equilibrium of the Rasengan is disturbed by making contact with something, the Rasengan releases a magnitude of force. Ooh, but it all goes back to our lesson about Gibbs free energy and reactions that occur spontaneously. Reactions are reversible when they can go forward or backward without any extra energy being used. Remember, this isn't just one reaction happening once, it's billions and trillions of reactions, and some of them might be going one way while others are going another way. And when the forward and reverse reactions occur at the same rate, that's called chemical equilibrium. And reaction basically never stops, it's just that we don't notice any changes at that point, because everything that happens in in one direction is perfectly balanced out by what happens in the other direction. That's why reactants like this are written with a double arrow, indicating that the process runs both directions. Like if I stand on a balance board, I never stop moving, I just shift my body back and forth to compensate for the motion of the board. When it moves left, I move right, and vice versa, and by doing that I'm able to stay upright. There are also different variations of the Rasengan. It can be adjusted in size and the chakra type or multiple can be used simultaneously. With size, it's basically increasing the quantity of the chakra to increase the strength of the Rasengan. For example, the Big Ball Rasengan, which took over Naruto over two and a half years to learn as a result of training with Jiraiya. The Rasengan can also be used in multiple uses, such as the Rasengan Super Barrage or the Spiraling Strife Spheres Jutsu created by Naruto to create multiple Rasengans by increasing the number of clones news. So it's quite overpowered. The Nuse's chakra also affects the Rasengan and its ability. This is what often affects the Rasengan the most, as the chakra of the Nuse has a huge influence on the Rasengan and its destructive capabilities. Naruto in many different cases has enhanced the Rasengan. When his chakra has been under the influence of different factors such as the Senjutsu or Tailed Beast chakra, under the influence of Senjutsu, the Rasengan is essentially the same but is more powerful due to the nature type of Senjutsu Chakra. Tailed Beast Chakra also works perfectly with the Rasengan since the Rasengan was based off the Tailed Beast Bomb. Tailed Beast Chakra can easily be used to enhance the Rasengan to become stronger, such as with the Vermilion Rasengan or the Magnet Release Rasengan. From this we can see that it is relatively easy to produce a Rasengan even if your chakra changes. However, the difficult thing is adding a chakra nature type to the Rasengan, hence why Minato saw it as an incomplete jutsu. So far, as we know, only three people have been able to add a nature type to the Rasengan, Naruto, Konohamaru and Boruto. Naruto was the first to achieve this feat by adding his wind nature to the Rasengan, which Minato and Kakashi failed previously to do, thus leading to Kakashi creating the Chidori. Naruto struggled to do this initially as he described it as needing the ability to look left and right at the same time. However, he did overcome this by using another shadow clone. Whilst the first clone is required to add the containment factor of the Rasengan, the second clone infuses the wind chakra in order to produce the wind release Rasengan. Konohamaru has also been shown to use the wind release Rasengan in Boruto, so we can naturally assume that since he is the student of Naruto, that Naruto probably taught him this jutsu. Naruto also took the wind release Rasengan even a step beyond and developed the Rasen Shuriken. 
a jutsu that adds wind blades that produce a countless number of microscopic wind blades that damage anything and everything up to a cellular level and attacks the chakra system to such a degree that no amount of medical ninjutsu can heal it. Tsunade even classed it as a kinjutsu as it can damage the user to almost untreatable levels. However, Naruto was able to overcome this risk by using Senjutsu Chakra. This prevents the Rasen Shuriken from damaging the Nusa. The Rasen Shuriken also has a variant such as the mini Rasen Shuriken, Big Bull Rasen Shuriken attack, Tailed Beast Rasen Shuriken and then Super Beast Tailed Beast Rasen Shuriken. So, it's such an overpowered Jutsu, how is the Chidori even gonna compare? Let's, I mean, hopefully we cover that in a future video but yeah. Lastly, Boruto. Boruto is able to subconsciously add his wind nature to the Rasengan and is able to produce the Vanishing Rasengan. The Vanishing Rasengan can be described as a miniature Rasengan which is capable of being thrown due to the wind release nature applied to it, similar to the throwing ability of the Rasen Shuriken, but before it reaches its target it also vanishes, most likely due to the wind nature type applied, we do not know yet. But Boruto was able to do this in an unspecified, unspecified way but it's likely due to his chakra being naturally infused with wind release and uh, yeah, the Rasengan is just ridiculous, it's part of the plot, it's what makes the character overpowered, it's, what, it's what's gonna make Boruto overpowered and above everyone else. So as always, thank you guys for watching this video and if there are any other jutsus or th something you want us to cover deeply about, let us know in the comment section below. And remember to hit the like button and follow us on Twitter or you know Snapchat or Instagram and we see you next time.